Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla. Hi, I am a leadership coach and on this channel, I help leaders add value to their leadership skills, level up, get from where they want to go to where they want to be. But I also love to plan. I'm a planner person and I have my own digital planners out there that many of you have joined me in this channel to check out. Recently, um, many of you have bought the Leader Standard Work Bundle for OneNote or for GoodNotes. I love this planner and so I'm going to show you how I use this for leadership, for my work as a leader and kind of go over the method of leader standard work for you so that you can start using this really awesome tool in 2022. So let's dive in. I'm going to be using the planner in GoodNotes. You'll see I have this wonderful flat lay that has the leader standard workbook. You get this PNG when you use it in OneNote so that you can add the planner in OneNote. Today, I'm going to be going over the leader standard work template, which is found every single week of every month of the year. So I have started planning January. I actually go back to work for my transfusion medicine manager job on the 10th, and I'm filming this the week before, and so I'm not yet, yet ready to go back um, in terms of my calendar. So I'm going to be working on filling that out. I wanted to show you this. If you use the OneNotes or the GoodNotes version, each week is linked to a um, the Leader Standard Work template. So you'll see if I click on week two, it takes me to the Leader Standard Work template and also has the Leave Happy Tasks here on the right-handed page. I'm going to tilt this a little bit because I'm going to start writing. I want to show you how to use this template for your work. So I want to, I'm going to scan the document and then I'm going to start filling it out for you. Leader standard work. What is standard work? In terms of leadership, or if you think about lean thinking, standard is something that we do the same. But I will take this even further for leadership and say that standards are a level to which we hold ourselves. You give yourself a standard, you uphold to a standard. So for me, a standard work isn't just making sure that I do things the same over time to create consistency, but it's also saying, hey, like I want to operate at an exceptional level. I'm not a perfect human. I'm not I'm trying to be perfect. I am just striving for excellence, right? And so each day I want to be able to say I'm doing the things that matter, the right things, and be able to keep track so that I can reflect on that and just continuously improve over time. That's what a standard helps me do. That's what my leader standard work helps me do. So this um, template is in this planner. It's also on my website, which I'll have linked in the description below. And you can get just the template separately if you want, but also know it's in your planner, whether it's the bundle you've chosen for OneNote or whether you are using it in GoodNotes here. The way that it's organized is, <laughs> is me, after many iterations of using this, I have tweaked it and changed it up. And so here's what I have, it, how I have it laid out. I have it laid out in a daily section. So what are the daily recurring tasks that you have every single day? that um, are on your calendar. So I have a space for you to write the time, how many hours this task takes, what the name of or description of the appointment is, and then um, you can put the date here, the month here, and essentially create a system where you can check off um, whether or not this task happens on this day. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I also have that for weekly tasks that are recurring, and I also have a space for monthly. The other thing that you can use this for is to put things in the daily, weekly, or monthly section that are strategic projects or time blocks or things that you want to get done during your week to move yourself forward as a leader, whether it's personal growth, whether it's work on a specific project towards one of your goals. That also needs to go in your standard work so that you don't forget it. So this tool is really to be used in conjunction with your calendar. So I'm in week two, so you'll see when I'm clicking here, I have some daily pages um, in front of it. But you want to use the Leader Standard Work Tool in conjunction with this calendar, with your calendar. Now, if you're using OneNote or if you're like me, um, you use GoodNotes and OneNote in conjunction, you're, I'm going to want to look at a calendar, also my work one that's tied to my work calendar, like Outlook, for example. So that's sort of the benefit of using OneNote is if you use Outlook 
or a Microsoft application for work, you can actually sync your Outlook calendar with your OneNote planner. So you can sync this, um, you can sync your leader standard work in OneNote with your work calendar. And I have another video showing you how to do that and I'll put that in the description below. Otherwise, you might wanna be transcribing from your work calendar to here or your personal calendar to here, or you can literally just use this for high level and be looking at your work calendar screen and then be looking at your standard work here in your planner. Now, of course, you have this file. You can just print this out as a piece of paper and carry this around with you as well. So it's totally up to you, totally customizable for you. But your calendar and your leader standard work have to work together in tandem. Now, the reason I have leader standard work separate from my calendar is because you know, your calendar helps you time block and know when to do things, but it doesn't often help you know like whether or not you did them or accomplished them. And it doesn't help to remind you to move things to different days if you need to do that. So this helps you level load. So the bottom of this template is kind of totaling the number of hours that you're in meetings and knowing like, do I have enough time for my strategic goals to move my work forward? And for me, a rule of thumb is the goal is to have less than 50% of my work day in meetings, because if I have more than that, when am I going to get the work done? So this is a visual way to self-manage, to be able to say, no, I need to move things around in my calendar. I need to ask for more time. I need to determine, is this meeting really the best one for me to be in? And I might need to work with my boss to help me level load and plan my days better. And so this helps you really reflect. The other part of the method, my leave happy method that I talk about on this channel is leave happy tasks, which is just, you know, your top most important things for the day. And I try to limit myself to one to three things. It's just not possible to get more than one to three things done during the day around our meetings and our time with our folks, our people. And so we need to be able to prioritize to strategize, to look at the bigger picture, the month, the week, but then, excuse me, but then also your days. And so you can put your top things here. They should also be in your standard work, but you can put them here so you know what day you're gonna do them and also time block them on your calendar. And then if you're using the Good Notes Planner, each day of the week is actually linked to the daily page for, um, for that day of the week. So you can actually write your leap happy tasks here in your daily layout as well. So let me quick fill this out and just show you what an example would look like. And I have it Monday through Friday because most people are working the five day work week, Monday through Friday. If you'd like me to, to see me come out with an addition that includes Saturday or Sunday or has like a Sunday start date or something different, put that in the comments below because I'm going to keep creating planners and I will create a new template if that's something that you all want to see. All right, so I finished my days of the week. I'm gonna come over here and label this January. Okay, so now what you would do is you would look at each day of the week and you'd start filling in things. So let's just say I have um, eight o'clock meeting and let's say it's a 15 minute meeting. So it's 0.25 minutes and I'm gonna say it's a, I'm just gonna call it meeting. I'm gonna leave it very generic. And it happens on every single day. So what you would do is you could make a box here. Actually, let's use this square tool. And you can create your grids. And so what you would do is every single day, as you're going throughout your day, once you attend this meeting at eight o'clock, you would come over here and mark it off with an X. If you miss the meeting, you would either leave a blank or put a, an O here or a circle. And this is called visual management. And this helps you see right away, okay, three out of four time, three out of five times this week, I was able to make it to this meeting. And that's good. That might be good for you. Now, maybe you weren't able to make it to the meeting, let's say... Let's just pretend and say like four times or something. So it wasn't a very good week for attendance for you. At the end of the week, you could ask yourself, okay, so does this mean that I need to level load, change something? Is there a reason I'm not able to make this meeting consistently? Is this a meeting I need to attend? 
yes or no, and then that helps you better iterate your days and your weeks and understand like what level or what standard am I holding myself to. So you'd come here and you'd fill in all of your meetings and create grids like this as well. Okay, so now that we have the daily figured out, let's put in some extra meetings here. I decided to clear off Friday because I wanna give you an example of when you take a day off. What you can do is put out of office. And then what you can do is draw a line all the way to the bottom. So you know that day is off limits. So let's put in some more pretend meetings. So I don't know about you, but I always have to manage my calendar. So I'm going to put in some email management or I have to manage my account. My, I can't talk my email. So I'm going to say I spend an hour every day on email management. And let's say I also have a huddle at 10 o'clock and it's a, let's say it's a half an hour. Okay. And maybe I'm doing a project right now and there is a project, um, like post go live project touch point. Okay, so what you could do, there's two different ways to do this. So for the daily, you're going to always have a grid that looks like this. So you're going to, if something happens every day, you're going to fill it in every single day of the week. So you're going to have, you know, four or five boxes here if you weren't out on Friday. So let's just do that. And you can take the opportunity to finish writing all your meetings here. So then you can just do the grids one time. Okay, so what you could do, there's two different ways to do this. So for the daily, you're going to always have a grid that looks like this. So you're going to, if something happens every day, you're going to fill it in every single day of the week. So you're going to have, you know, four or five boxes here if you weren't out on Friday. So let's just do that. And you can take the opportunity to finish writing all your meetings here. So then you can just do the grids one time. So that's one option, one way to do it. Now, some people ask me like, is it okay to put something in the daily section that doesn't happen every day, but happens most days? And I will say 100% yes. There's two ways to notate this. You can create a grid just like we just did where you are um, creating, And like, ideally, I would have done that at the same time. It doesn't have to be perfect, Kayla. Okay. <laughs> I would have done something like this where I would have created the grid at the same time. And I would just color in, like, say, it, it's, say it's every day except for Tuesdays. You could just color this in so that you know, oh, I don't have that meeting on Tuesdays. I don't have to worry about attending that day. And that's, it's blocked off. So you could do that. Or another way people like to do it is just to, because I've created all of these cells here, all of these are light gray, so it so it's not too distracting when you're farther away, you don't see them as, as much as the dark black color. What you could just do then is, let's just say this happens, you know, just a couple times a week. Oh, I have the thicker one on here. You could just make a box for, okay, Monday and Wednesday. And then it just becomes more obvious, like, oh, I don't have boxes here. It doesn't happen Tuesday, Thursday. And that's completely, totally fine. This is meant for you to customize. It's not meant for you to create more work for you to like fill out things and, and doodle in here. It's just meant to be flexible for you. So that's how I would fill that in in the daily section. Now let's go to the weekly section. Let's just put in, hurry up and put in a couple more meetings here. Okay, so I have a project management touch point every Monday th and Wednesday. Let's put something that's conflicting at that at that same time, 11. So let's just say um, for weekly, I have an 11 o'clock meeting. That's a one hour meeting. And it's let's just say it's an operations meeting. And let's just say it's, like I said, it's Monday.
Okay, so now I have two conflicting meetings. So what you would, once you're filling this out, this really helps you say like, okay, I have this touch point at the same time as this weekly meeting. This is only weekly, but I have another touch point for this on Wednesday. Do I skip Monday or do I skip the ops meeting or do I let the people know at the ops meeting I'm going to be 15 minutes late because I'm going to attend both. So here's where you'd be very intentional. You'd either decide and say like, I'm not going to attend this meeting, but I will attend Wednesday, right? Or you might say, you know, actually I am going to attend both, right? And you'd mark off both as you've attended both, but you'd communicate that you're going to be late to this meeting. Or maybe you do decide to attend this meeting and you anticipate some things that you're going to learn and you might not be able to make it. You communicate intentionally here and then after you attended and didn't attend here, you'd mark it that way. And so that's how you level load and clearly see when you have overlapping things. Um, same thing with the monthly meetings. Let's just put one in here. So that's how you'd fill in your leader standard work. So obviously you'd have more things here and then you would tally. Okay. So I have an hour, a half an hour. It's an hour and a half and I have two other 15 minute meetings. So that's two hours every day on Mondays. I'm spending doing my daily recurring meetings. Um, and then for Tuesdays, it's a 15 minutes less. So it's 1.75 hours and you go through and add these up. You do the same thing for your weekly categories. So in this instant, we have one meeting weekly and we have nothing here for monthly. And then you tally it up. So I have two hours plus one hour. So I have three hours out of my eight hour workday in meetings. So that's less than 50%. So that's a good day. And what I like to do is come here and label with my highlighter, like green for good. If it was, say it was five hours or something like that, five out of eight, I might come over here and I'd be like, all right, I'm going to put, make this a red day and say, okay, this is too many meetings because we haven't even put, um, strategic goals or projects in here. So what you would also then want to do is say, okay, this week I'm time blocking, you know, two hours on Thursday at, I don't want to do it late in the day. Let's just say I'm going to do it noon to two and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to work on my strategic goal. Number one. Now I'm going to give you a tip. If you've ever read the book, the 12 week year, they talk about, um, setting time for strategic goals on your calendar. And it's probably not the only resource, but it's a great book that and an easy read or an easy listen on audible. So I highly recommend that. And I love that strategy for moving your work forward in a meaningful way. You need to dedicate time to it on your calendar. So now I'm like, okay, great. I have time on Thursday to work on my strategic goal from noon to two. And once you have it done, you mark it off here. If for some reason you had to move this block and you couldn't get to it, this is a great time to say, okay, you know, I didn't get to it. When you're looking at the end of your work week saying, okay, next week when I'm building my leader standard work, how can I take this block and move it to somewhere else? So then that would be how you would take care of that. So this is a short overview of how to use this leader standard work tool to level load, create awareness about how many meetings you have. Is it taking over your calendar? Are you building in time for strategic goals? Do you have patterns where you're consistently not meeting meetings or you have too much on one day and you need to level load? And then I will do another video on how you take those strategic goals and put them out, you know, spread them out throughout the week and use the leave happy tasks to make progress on your day. Um, but if you found this helpful, if you want me to do more deep dives into leader standard work, let me know in the comments. And when I come back to work, I plan to do a weekly video on my real leader standard work so you can see how I'm using this in real life. So this is a short overview of how to use this leader standard work tool to level load, create awareness about how many meetings you have. Is it taking over your calendar? Are you building in time for strategic goals? Do you have patterns where you're consistently not meeting meetings or you have too much on one day and you need to level load? And then I will do another video on how you take those strategic goals and put them 
out, you know, spread them out throughout the week and use the leave happy tasks to make progress on your day. Um, but if you found this helpful, if you want me to do more deep dives into leader standard work, let me know in the comments. And when I come back to work, I plan to do a weekly video on my real leader standard work so you can see how I'm using this in real life. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. And until next time, be a light and I'll see you in the next video.